This recording is going to conclude our entire series of lectures on tissues found in our body with our nervous tissue. Now remember, nervous tissue is also an excitable tissue, which means you can stimulate our nerve cells and get a response. And like muscle tissue, our nervous tissue is also going to be able to carry electrical signals. So not only is our nervous tissue excitable, but it exhibits conductivity. And finally, going along with both the fact that this tissue is excitable and it can conduct electrical signals, we need to be able to get those electrical signals to the next cell. And so our nervous tissue exhibits the ability of secretion, which allows neurotransmitters to carry our signal to the next cell. Now in our nervous tissue, we are going to have two major cell types. We see neurons and neuroglia. Sometimes neuroglia are called glial cells. Okay, now that we have some unifying characteristics of nervous tissue, let's take a closer look. Here we see a slide of a couple of different neurons and our neuroglia and all of the processes that stretch in between these cells. You will notice that there is some white space around our neurons and neuroglia and we can see that our neurons are very distinctly shaped. So let's talk about the basic structure of a neuron right quick. Here we have a rudimentary drawing of a neuron. This area here is considered to be the cell body of our neuron. And our cell body can go by different names. We can call it the cell body, or we could call it the soma, or we can call it the neurosoma. But regardless, our cell body or soma is going to contain our nucleus, which I just highlighted in purple, and generally it is also attached to dendrites. All of these connections here are dendrites. And what is the function of a dendrite? A dendrite is going to serve to receive signals from other cells. So that signal goes to our cell body and then our cell body makes some decisions about what to do with those signals. If the decision is to pass that signal on, then that signal will travel down the axon and this is where we see our conductivity coming in. So our signal travels down our axon and arrives at our synaptic bulb where neurotransmitters are released to travel across a synaptic gap and stimulate the next cell. So let's take a look at our picture and see if we can identify some of these structures. So here we see a cell body and a nucleus and we also see several processes coming off of our cell body. Now unfortunately we cannot tell if those are axons or dendrites. That is going to have to remain a mystery to us. But what we can identify very specifically is our neurosoma or our cell body and we are going to see those in every slide of nervous tissue. So now that we can tell what we're looking at here we can get some more specific information. For locations of nervous tissue, well we have our brain and our spinal cord. Those I hope are obvious to you, but we have some nervous tissue in our periphery, so outside of our brain and spinal cord, in our peripheral and cranial nerves, as well as in ganglia. 
a ganglion is a cluster of neuron cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system that is outside of our brain and spinal cord. And please forgive me, I ran out of room and had to abbreviate spinal cord. When we talk about functions, we need to distinguish between our neurons and our neuroglia. So neurons are going to send and receive electrical signals and in this way they allow our body to communicate between the brain and all of the various different other parts of your body. So our neurons are going to function in communication throughout our entire body. Then we have neuroglia and I didn't point out the neuroglia on our previous page so let me do that now. All of these little purple dots that we see scattered throughout the tissue, all of those little purple dots, those are our neuroglia. Our neuroglia are going to be non-conductive supportive cells that have a wide range of functions that we will cover specifically when we cover the nervous system. So for right now, you can learn that these cells are non-conductive and they act in support of all of the different functions of our nervous system. So here we have a nice summary slide and it emphasizes that our neurons are going to be different from our neuroglia. So they have different functions. However, our location is going to be the same for our neurons and our neuroglia. Here's a couple of different slides. Not all of our slides are going to look the same, but what we will be able to see in all of our slides is our neuron cell body, or our soma, very clearly with nuclei in the middle of there and then we're also going to see our non-conductive supportive glial cells in all of our slides as well. So it just kind of depends on what stain you get which um, which kind of view you're going to see. So in this slide, the one that we were looking at before, it's really clear that we see neurons, but even if we go to a different stain, we can still see those neuron cell bodies very, very clearly. Now some of these pictures might look a little bit familiar. What we have on this side of the page is areolar loose CT proper. And then on the left side of our page, we see nervous tissue. Students have pointed out to me in the past that these tissues look rather alike, probably because of the fibroblasts and fibrocytes that we have scattered throughout our areolar tissue and the neuroglia that we have scattered throughout our nervous tissue. However, when you see nervous tissue, you will always see cell bodies in your frame of view. And if we take a look at our areolar tissue, there are no large masses that might be counted as cell bodies. So you are going to be looking out for these cell bodies, and those cell bodies are a giveaway that you're looking at nervous tissue. That wraps it up for our lecture series on the four major tissue types and their specific tissues found within each group. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask your instructor.